I'm really excited. I've just worked out that I can do other things on my phone while it's recording. Because <laughs> normally <laughs> I have to sit here and be like, what are the questions? What are the questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've had, you've had a, um, like a real technological breakthrough. Break- oh, I have. I've we did, um, a done well this week. <laughs> and Tess worked out, was it last week, that you can there's, get rid of all the background yeah, noise? There's something called a noise gate. On. So I just I edit on um Garage Band on my Mac because it was there and I was like that seems like it'll be useful and um I was there was a button and I was like oh I wonder what that does and then nothing happened and there's a slider and I was like oh I can't hear oh 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 my goodness this is amazing yeah. <laughs> and we recorded a load at badminton and we went and um it was like oh we have to find somewhere really quiet mm-hmm. because of all the background noise and <laughs> yeah. really just take it out yeah and now I take it out <laughs> yeah the only problem is if the person is talking at the same volume as the background noise then you oh. can't because it's yeah it cuts them out as well but you know sure it'll be fine, fine. <laughs> yeah uh, hello everyone welcome to this episode of the pony podcast this is um a follow-up the second part for our blue cross episodes today we've got grace um, tell us a bit about your role at the Blue Cross. So I am a horse welfare training supervisor. So I oversee the training of all the horses here at the centre and the team that also train all the horses. So we've got a team of seven grooms that are on the yard training mm. all of the horses. And yeah, and I oversee all of that. Oh, cool. So you like you're doing all the coordinating to like someone go and work with a pony and then come back and be like, today we did this, they did really well. Yeah, that, that, that does happen. And I love uh, <coughs> celebrating the positiveness. Yeah. So people go, today I can catch it. And I'm like, yay! <laughs> so, it didn't try to bite me today. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, or it tried, but it missed. <laughs> um, but yeah, for the ones that less like to go, yay, all the time, then yeah, they have to fill in lots of paperwork that also proves that we've done that legally oh, yeah. as well. <laughs> Uh, what sort of methods do you use to rehabilitate ponies that come into the centre? So we use both pressure release, more mm. what people use in yeah. the equine industry, and we also use positive reinforcement, mm. so things like clicker training. Yeah. So we do use food and we use things like scratches, which mm. obviously horses also find rewarding. Mm. So and we basically create individual plans for mm. whatever they like or don't like. Say mm. if it was catching, like we'd go through small step-by-step mm plan to be able to get to our end goal Mm. and we reward along that road so Mm. that could just be us removing ourselves or it could be us adding in food or adding in scratches for whatever they like Mm. do you have any top tips for catching ponies because alex's is terrible to catch we went to to hoys and my mum was meant to get my horses in and she got there and they were in and so i assumed that they'd been fine i've got one horse that she wants to come in doesn't like the idea of being caught and i turn out with a head collar on and you have to clip the lead rope onto the head collar without putting your hand on the head collar and the yard owner decided to be helpful and bring them in and I was like well surely they're fine and this morning she popped her head in and went so I got your horses in yesterday I was like yeah she's like I had to use my best Monty Roberts Roberts method with Maria because she didn't want to come in and I tried this and I tried that and I tried (laughs) food and in the end it was food and I was like I'm really really sorry sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I've had her about 10 years um and she There's started off okay and then oh. got to this and then hasn't got any worse. So I'm like, as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you maintain this level, it's doable. Yeah. Um, so top tips for catching, it's basically learning basic how they're interacting with you at the mm. time because they give little cues to say like, yes, come a bit closer yeah. or actually, no, I'm currently not feeling okay. Yeah. So it's just little cues like, are they looking directly at mm. you? Are they starting to look away? Yeah. Because generally what they do if they're going to start wandering away or <laughs> running away, they look away first yeah. and then they start walking away. So it's just little cues mm. and actually building on your timing to be able to yeah. pick those up sooner. And actually, can I add in something that you like at this point in time to make you mm. catching you more likely? Yeah. Yes, but this is something I've noticed. <laughs> uh, taking away from <laughs> what you're saying, but um, she has to be within like a bubble of me. Yes. And then she has to take one step towards me and then like her whole body language will change and be like no you can catch me and if she's further away and you walk towards her no nah, she walks off <laughs> <laughs> it's all about knowing your individuals <laughs> the worst mind will do is you'll walk into the field and she'll look at you and you'll call her and she might whinny at you and then she'll walk to the far side of the field no faster just will walk and then once she's in the far corner she'll stop and you can catch her. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go anywhere. So you've got me. <laughs> yeah, or it's just sort of a like, oh, I happen to be here. I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dog's going this way anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the worst. So when the horses come in, <clears throat> yeah. 
what's the first thing you do with them to assess what stage they're at and what sort of areas they're going to need the most help with? Yeah, because we have such a wide range of horses, so it goes all the way from horses which are, you would say, are relatively normal, like normal catch mm. and leading, and we get to completely feral horses. So normally our behaviour assessment starts with interacting with them in the field, yeah. to get them in their natural environment, and we'll see how they So where they can run away from you. In. Yeah, so you can get to the point where some horses, you will go into the field and you will find that they have literally cleared to the other side <laughs> of the field. And, okay, we've got a lot of work cool. to do, guys. <laughs> or it could be, um, yeah, that they're already starting to interact with you, or they're already showing maybe signs that they're not very happy and maybe aggressive type mm. thing so it literally starts from the moment where they enter here mm. and they enter the field and we will start making mm. an individual plan from what we see right from that point. Mm. We had a little tour of the site yeah. and by your fields you've got sort of wood chip areas and you've got shelters. Do you find that being able to work them, bring them in from the field and have them not in an enclosed stable and they can still see their friends, do you find that helps them learn faster because it's not as stressful absolutely especially horses because they are such herd animals Mm. like sometimes bringing them into the stable when they can't see their other Mm. friends they're already stressed before we've Mm. even started going actually now can we be friends um so having those and they're more natural and they maybe come into those areas to be fed and they already have got some more relaxation it might be that we can put the friend in the wood chip and then just work them on the shelter so as, as calm as we can we actually find we'll progress quicker mm. and once we've got quite a good bond with them then we can b- move on to things like okay now can we do the same at the yard and and mm. build it in that way oh well, that's so nice um do you get like a variety of different breeds and things do some breeds progress faster than others um definitely some breeds <laughs> progress faster than others you'd say that um it depends what you're teaching actually yeah. so i'd say a cob is like quite quick at anything you do with food they're quite <laughs> quick at so if you're if you're trying to motivate a cob i would go for a clicker mm. training because they quite like food mm-hmm. um but it depends so if you're going for like backing you'd probably say that um more your thoroughbred types are quicker mm. at learning from pressure and release mm. because they're highly motivated mm. by release of pressure mm than you would your cob, which you might have to do quite a lot of reinforcement. Yeah. Come on, mate, shall yeah. we actually go forward yeah. now? So it, it depends what you're teaching, but mm. yes, do learn different speeds and what their relationship with that is, because mm. if they're more of a flightier breed or a, or a freezer breed like a cob, yeah. like it's just what also their reaction is to what you're asking as well. Yeah. Um, with the clicker training, yes. I know a little bit about it, but yeah. can you explain a bit more about how it works yeah. and what you would, how you would use it in your training? Yeah, so the, the beauty of clicker training is is what you're trying to do is mark a behaviour that you want. So you can either have a physical clicker or I use just a verbal noise mm. and mine is... Because yeah. <laughs> I've always got my voice with yeah. me instead of always having a clicker. So what you want to do is you want to decide what behaviour you're going to train. Mm. So let's say it was catching, because we've always taken a little bit catching. So maybe your horse starts to take a step towards you and you'd click the be- behaviour that you wanted. So your behaviour... Of walking mm. slightly towards me, right, you're going to get a reward for that. And you would mark mm. and give it food or a scratch or whatever it finds rewarding mm. to make that more, um, and then a step by step plan. So, then so you, you can get, flag it cl- more clearly. Yes, so that basically creates a bridge between what you want it to mm. happen and then the marker says yes, then mm. the food will come for you or mm. scratch, and then the food comes. So as long as you can create a good uh, chain of reaction between event, click, mm food it mm. gets very repeatable for the horse and comes very very clear about mm. what they want um and then you just create a step-by-step plan of, okay mm. what's the end goal and we just yeah. walk back um back from there and then you just slowly stop rewarding for the bits that are very concrete mm. so maybe it's the one step so now okay now i'm only going to click when you've done three steps yeah. before was me and then i'm going to click mm-hmm. and feed um and you just slowly build all those things in but you can do so much stuff with clicker training <laughs> we've trained horses to be back to you see in clicker training mm. you can train them to do tricks you can do all the <laughs> concentrate on tricks <laughs> sometimes it is a beautiful Fun. thing that the borrowers like to see when they come in oh this one bows yes it does <laughs> because the team's got bored and we've tried to teach it <laughs> <now>. <laughs> um but there's many different things and it depends on your individual like I said some will be highly motivated for a 
a click and then food yeah. and summer scratch it's just knowing mm-hmm. your individual but there's so many things it's such a versatile thing to do have. you ever get ones who like refuse to move on because they're like no i've done my one step where's my treat i'm not doing anymore <laughs> you sometimes do because you do have optimistic horses mm. and pessimistic horses like we do in yeah. people and um, you your optimistic horses will trial anything okay yeah. well i yeah. one step didn't work yeah. okay maybe i'll yeah. try more and then you sort of get the ones that like i'm just gonna chill here because yes. i did my one step, my one step. You. <laughs> um so you then see if you can motivate it by maybe mm. you'll move slightly and then okay oh and then they maybe they can't pass. okay cool you've done your second step oh, okay, can treat them. but yeah I, I had um, i had a pony who alex's sister actually has now and uh, we were trying to teach him to leg heels so she should move sideways and he did one step and he got a big pass and he thought he was very clever yeah. and then I went I got him to do like three or four steps and that was the point at which he was like well, why would I do any more where's my where's my pack gone and he'd like stop at the end of the line and be like where's it where's my pack <laughs> you haven't told me how clever I am <laughs> no it's, it's nice that um you can take your training and adjust to their personalities because mm. they are so different um, because I've got a horse that is not very forward going. Yeah. Would if she was a person, she'd want to sit around watching Netflix all day. Um, <laughs> I can and, relate. <laughs> and uh, she does not like being in the school. Mm. But if every time she does something good, you give her a pat and tell her that she's really good, she gets more and more motivated <laughs> to be like, "Oh, okay, I'll try a bit harder because mm. I was good and I did it right." And then she really enjoys her work mm. because you can be like come on, this is good, do another one. She's like, okay, I got a reward. <laughs> uh, whereas the other one just is like, I, I'm here to do my job and if you don't interfere too much, it's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's nice that you have such an individual plan for your horses. Yeah, definitely. And it's just, they're all just so mm. different. Like I said, we see around 200 come through the mm. centre, so it one size fits all does yeah. not work here <laughs> when you see as many as we do. So If you just... get like nervous ponies coming in, you can't, you, obviously you can't kind of start off by telling them off for bad behaviour. How do you kind of bring that in? So how do you bring in like a negative reinforcement for stuff like them biting you or stuff like that? So I would start with... Um, making sure they understand negative reinforcement yeah. first yeah. Um, so if we're going to do that I'd make sure that um, your leading responses are really mm. quite good because actually biting is a deficiency of the horse's stop response so when yeah. the horse goes to bite you it's actually a forward lunge so what yeah. actually happens so for quite horses horses we have here Mm. it's because actually what they're doing is they're going into pressure so actually we find by teaching them to stop and step back you will find that biting will stop Mm. will get less anyway because it's just a it's a like a deficiency in their stop response Mm. so as soon as you can get them to stop pushing into pressure you actually will find that biting will get less Ah. so you start with like reinforcing that before you start actually like telling them off like reacting like that yes so i would try to get to see if we can get there without going straight for punishment Mm. um punishment works in 50 percent of horses some some will uh reward well from punishment so Mm. 50 percent of horses will do more it more because actually they quite like the attention yeah so i wouldn't say that punishment Mm. is always something that i would say is the go-to for all horses (laughs) because it doesn't my when my horse first came over from ireland she'd bang the ground and if the banging the ground didn't work she'd get higher and higher up the wall to the point where we had stables like yours where they're half wood and half metal and she'd hit yeah. the metal and you could we i tried shouting at her and it didn't work and so i had to ignore her and i ignored her for about two weeks and it, and it was horrible because the metal on metal just goes through the whole yard and it proper yeah. oh, it's just a horrible sound <laughs> and i just have to wait and wait and wait and luckily she doesn't really anymore and yeah. now if she starts you can tell her you can kind of like say her name and she's like what oh, <laughs> but um, it took a long time <laughs> yeah it sometimes does like i said it works only for half yeah some do it more some do it less so yeah <laughs> knowing your individual again yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people have problems with loading their horses um and we had one that we had a problem with and we've sorted that out have you got any top tips um top tips for me is often it's because of the space that the horse doesn't mm-hmm. like it's the enclosed mm-hmm. space so ones that we find here that generally don't like to be stable but also don't like to load because yeah. it's once again it's a small space and they're generally on their mm-hmm. own so i would try to see if i could get them okay with mm-hmm. small spaces and maybe the darkness mm-hmm. and the isolation which mm-hmm. is obviously <laughs> all about loading yeah. The ones that are a little bit like you just can't get them on the ramp, I would also say I'd work on my leading responses because yeah. basically leading 
is loading is mm -hmm. a form of leading. So mm. if you can get that really light and that really consistent, well, generally we find if we do a program of um, getting our leading better, we actually don't really find that many problems with loading yeah. because we've just it's just continuation of mm. what we've already done. So that could be stop, turn, go and yield because mm. often they can then yield off the ramp. So mm. if you can train mm. them to yield and then go straight and then put your forward cue back mm. on, we actually don't really have a problem with do you have to have like a really standardised set of cues for the ponies between all of the handlers? We do really try to be as consistent because it might be that their mm. current trainer isn't in, so yeah. someone else needs to do it because maybe they've got an appointment. Yeah. So we try to be as consistent as we can. Mm. So we do all try to do everything in the same way. There obviously will be a tiny yeah. bit of everyone does it slightly yeah. differently, but it's probably yeah, good for them to get used to the slight difference because yeah. they're going to be rehomed. Those people don't have your crib sheet <laughs> yes that is very true so we do do a bit of that and they do have to move on to mm. different trainers and like just yeah. so they don't get so context to one yeah. person that this is my only person that I feel safe with um yeah we do move mm. them around but yeah we try to do it as yeah. the same way as we can and we yeah. when the people come up for appointments when we try to explain our training mm. to them as well so there is a little bit of consistency for yeah. the horse so if you're having a problem say it's a really bargy horse mm. actually what we find is if you can stop and step it back actually and then get mm. it just to stand still and reward the standing mm. still you'll find that barging is a lesson we would show all of how you would do that <laughs> i was working for the girl i work for we were out in france and she has one horse who like she's she's not nasty she just when she's going, she's going. Yeah. And I was walking back from across from the show jumping, and I got so bored of being dragged everywhere by this horse. So I, it was like a ten minute walk, and every time, it, every time it put more pressure than just going into a contact yeah. on a knee drape, I stopped and made it walk backwards, and then got it walking, and it stopped and made it walk backwards, and I it must have taken me twenty minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour to get back. But by the end, she walked politely, yes. and I got her back. And mind was like, you took a long time, and I was like, hmm. Would have been a lot, would have been a lot shorter if she'd listened. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But with your consistency, yeah. then she was like, "Oh, okay, yeah. actually, it's not quicker mm -hmm. if I just." Pull she was very the like, she's going like, oh, "Here it is, back," and she takes one begrudging step backwards and starts again. But you can probably see them like, "Oh, you." Yeah. But if that continued, you'd then find that she then wouldn't do that again because actually, it's Maddie, if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> control your horse <laughs> we when we had a tour around yeah. we saw your school and your setup in there with um uh, all your obstacles yeah and how do you use those in the training so like yeah we have things picture. like yeah. ramps and road signs and all that mm. stuff so especially our youngsters and the ones that are being prepared to mm. back like we want them to be as well-rounded as they can, especially if they're yearlings and mm. they might go out as a yearling. Yeah. We want them to have experienced as much as we can while we're here. Yeah. So they will learn how to go up onto mm. ramps, which also helps with things like loading. Um, they will do that and then we will just teach them actually going up to stuff that might be scary like that giant road sign yeah. actually if you touch it you're going to get a scratch or you're going to get yeah. a treat then you then find that novel objects or anything that you might find mm. on the hack what they actually do is they stop and they go oh, i think i want to go and touch that because like nice might happen so it's basically it's introducing things in the way that they're like actually new things are fun mm. so we basically yeah. really get that in especially yeah. for our youngsters and our older horses too but especially the small little cobs, which yeah. aren't the most desirable. We do a lot of like, but look, it could go out and do agility straight yeah. away. Because we've already done those. Do you have like an end point to your training? So if they progress really well, would you like start getting them to do bits of dressage and take them out to a little cross country course? And if you could find someone to take them out to a little show, so they see that, like, do you have a bit where you're like, okay, they need to find someone for themselves now? Yeah, we do. Uh, if Abby hasn't rehomed them, well, we're <laughs> Um, generally we don't get to the point where we would get as far as we would want yeah. to um, but if we did yes we absolutely <laughs> the team are craving to go Aww. and do all those type of things and we do have little cross-country jumps and mm. stuff here so if they're here oh, long enough we absolutely yeah. do train them and we even train them to go over in hand and stuff so our little oh. two-year-olds will learn to go over the tiny little cross-country oh, jumps so in case they ever get yeah. and the person wants to jump they know yeah. so as I much guess, as we can we would love to I guess it means the home has less to do as well because like, we've had a lot of young horses so we've been through the whole like, Yeah. you have to take them to the cross country course first and you take them to the little show down the road where there's two people there but it makes life easier for the home if you're like they've already seen that so you can just crack yeah. on go straight out like yeah we do work on especially like things like loading so all of our mm. youngsters do a lot of loading yeah. so they might just load and go on at 
I will walk hack somewhere mm. else just so they have been somewhere, somewhere else new. and yeah. different locations and stuff to see if we can get those rounded. As we yeah. can. And then I go, Abby, please can you be home? Then? <laughs> <laughs> They're really good now. Get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Got more I need to do. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for talking to us. You're very um, welcome. It's been really nice to hear all your positive stories mm. and um, all the methods you use. And especially how much you enjoy training all the horses. Mm. Um, and hopefully you have lots more success stories in yeah. the future. If people want to find out more about like what you're doing or like if they want to follow like the progress of different horses, is there any way they can do that? So we're very active on Instagram especially. So we're just Blue Cross Horses on Instagram or we do have our Facebook um, page which is Burford rehoming centre yeah um, <laughs> well done yeah um so we do do stuff on there but mostly you'll find us on instagram where we'll do lots of different things so we do like little clips on how to worm your horse mm. or how to train your horse to go in the trailer or all these mm. different little things and obviously lots of them are mm. available for rehoming so feel free to apply <laughs> Uh, well thanks everyone so much for listening if you want more episodes like this drop us an email so that we can do them uh, and that's at theponypod at gmail.com uh, like rate and subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this from because I did try and get us on Google Play but I don't actually know if we are on the Google Play store because I don't have an Android phone so I can't work that out um, and follow us on Instagram at theponypodcast like us on Facebook the Pony Podcast. And if there's, yeah, if there's any comments or anything, we are always at the end of the DM. (laughs) So, um, thanks. Bye. Bye.